Monday morning, very cloudy. Looking for some storms, storms later, excuse me. Uh, I am Will. Filling in for Jeff today is Ken. Good morning. Thank you so much for doing so as well. And joining us as she does of every course. Monday at this time, all the way from the Rockland County Business Journal, it's Tina Traster. Good morning, Tina. How are you this morning? Good morning. I'm feeling sunny. How's everybody over there? <laughs> uh, not so sunny over here, but uh, we are feeling pretty bright. Good. Well, bright is good. Ba dum cha. Uh, <laughs> We need we need a little sound effect for that. Yeah, we do have one, but it's very <laughs> not good. Not so good. I will. I, I we got to change that later on. But uh, right now, it's time to talk Rockland business. How are things <laughs> in the world of Rockland business, Tina? They are busy. It's a, a busy business. Um, <laughs> let's let's talk about uh, the big story of last week, and that is that a um, that is that um, uh, Stony Point's uh, Letchworth Village. Uh, has uh, another shot uh, at being uh, redeveloped and coming back to life. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you who don't know, Letchworth Village is a former psychiatric site that has been shuttered for nearly a quarter of a century, um, and it literally is 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 ghostly and um, um, and mostly abandoned, except that a couple of buildings there are used. Uh, the bulk of the buildings, however, um, even though they look like a film set, um, uh, are essentially crumbling and um, filled with asbestos and lead. And um, the site, you know, has been problematic for the town for not years but decades um, because there's been this question about what to do with this 30-acre um, or so site on the Stony Point side. And... Um, you know, things, developers have come and gone, plans have, have come and gone, and what uh, listeners will most remember was the controversial project that was on the table um, that um, went up in flames in a referendum, well, not really went up in flames, but was narrowly defeated uh, last November, um, because I think amongst other things, um, and, and there were many, many reasons probably why ultimately that plan uh, by Raja Mar for a hotel and conference center failed, uh, possibly was because he really didn't have a, um, he really didn't have experience behind him, and um, I don't know that he had articulated the plan, and, and ultimately uh, it, it went down. So um, now there is a new developer um, who has come forward with a plan, and um, he is a regional developer uh, who has built more than 2,000 residential units in the tri-state area, so he has a successful track record behind him. Mm -hmm. His name is uh, Glenn Vetromile, and he's the managing director of Hudson Park Group, LLC, uh, and he presented a plan um, on Tuesday, ni mm, yes, Tuesday night. Uh, to the town um, to build a essentially a multifaceted community oriented mix of residential and senior units uh, on 30 acres. Now another key thing, another difference here is that the, in the previous plan the um, developer who wanted to buy the site and, and redevelop it wanted to take the golf course uh, under his, his uh, ownership. That is not the case here. So there, and that had become very controversial last time around. That is not on the table here. This plan, um, while it does relocate a couple of golf course holes, um, it doesn't. It doesn't have any plans to take or, or own uh, or or really impact um, the golf course. Um, what the plan does speak to, it has uh, 50, 450 market rate units, including townhouses, condos, multifamily. And this is the key, 170 assisted and independent senior housing apartments. Um, there are two things that are missing in, in the town of Stony Point and uh, in, on, the on the housing front. Well, three, really. Uh, one is, is millennial housing. Mm -hmm. uh, two is 55 and older. And three is, um, is um, assisted living. Uh, that is because Stony Point uh, largely is a community of single-family homes. And it has it has developed that way over over years, but it has um, foreclosed on the possibility of people like yourself, Will, who are looking for that apartment, you know, with the sweet spot rent, 
Drat. Um, and um, <laughs> are there other millennials who want to come up and have a starter apartment um, up here, you know, in, in beautiful Rockland County, and they, 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 there's no entry point. Mm -hmm. So the, these kinds of developments, which we're seeing all over the region, in Connecticut and New Jersey, in New York, um, there's an understanding that there's a, a dearth of, of millennial housing. You know, we see that in, in uh, Clarkstown, which is still trying to get its TOD uh, up and, and running, and people should take a look at that story today as well. We can talk about that later if we have some more time, but there's more changes coming to the TOD in Clarkstown. Mm -hmm. But back to Stony Point, um, there's also certainly uh, an inability for people to age out into apartments because they just really don't exist. So um, the, the plan, you know, uh, would also, and, I, and here, here's the, the, key, the key thing, is that uh, estimates differ, dif differ but um, there are, I think there are about uh, eight or ten buildings, big colossal buildings, that have to be demolished and come down. And that runs to something like $10 million. So this is why it has been so prohibitive for developers who have come and looked and, and have left, um, because they they um, it, it's a big job um, to take on, and uh, there's a big cost to demolishing to safely demolishing um, all these buildings before anything new can be um, built. I mean the buildings uh, the Kirk and by the way the Kirkbride building which is kind of the um, the, the the gem of, of all of the buildings and is still currently used would remain uh, as well as um, the developers promising a new recreation center uh, aside the um, the baseball field so mm -hmm. this is this is another another plus and um, yes have something to say I was just curious because you were talking about the uh, audience or the audience the uh, you know the, the residents reaction to the previous proposal that went down in a very contentious race uh, back in November uh, talking about the advantages in terms of something that might work in the new developers favor given his experience and everything like that were you at the proposal meeting and how did you gauge the audience reaction we talked about news 12's report they said it was very mixed uh, um, Jim Monahan, the supervisor of Stony Point, said it was pretty positive. What What did you gauge from that meeting if you were there? Okay, I was there, and um, it was standing room only. <laughs> it, it was uh, there was a big turnout. Um, I think that um, I think that that the, the residents of Stony Point um, are um, they 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 are. I don't want to say. Skeptical. I want to say that they have questions. I think they want questions answered. I think they want an open forum uh, between the town, the developer, and themselves so that questions can be um, answered, uh, so that there is an honest and uh, open dialogue around this development. And I think that the citizens certainly deserve that. Um, I, I don't know what, what has been said by, you know, News 12 or, or uh, the supervisor, but what I can tell you is um, when the developer uh, did his presentation, after that uh, the supervisor said that it was not a public hearing, that this really wasn't the time for the question and answer session, uh, but I would say about four or five people raised a couple of points. Uh, one gentleman uh, wanted to know whether he would have the inside track to be able to get an apartment. Um, another woman uh, raised the issue of whether or not there would be a, possibly public space uh, on site, you know, so that the, the town could, uh, you know, that it would be open, that there would be some walking trail that would be open to the public so that the public could enjoy the space. Um, I'm trying to think. There was nothing uh, that was openly uh, contentious at that point uh, when while, while the developer was still there, and there was that back and forth. After that, I left the meeting to race home to write this rather long story so that it could be uh, up uh, that evening and into the morning. Right. I know that you know there there are, there's a faction in Stony Point that just seems to be anti-development, and so they basically were, you know, kind of banging that same drum uh, again at, at the town board meeting. Um, 
I think that this plan is radically different from the last one. And Do you think that gives it an advantage over previous plans? Oh, definitely. I mean, this is this is not even there's there's nothing about this plan that that um, duplicates uh, or is similar to anything about the the previous plan. The previous plan was a, a, a Stony Point uh, resident, Raja Amar, a uh, very wealthy man who had this vision to bring a luxury hotel and conference center to the site, but he wanted to take the golf course, okay? And I think that that became an emotional issue for the people in Stony Point. This speaks to the, a different set of issues. This is, a, you know, a big residential development, so it raises the questions of what does it mean to the sewers, what does it mean to the, to the uh, you know, to the schools, probably very little because this is mostly older people um, or, or younger people. Uh, you know, what, is, what does it mean for traffic? These, these are the issues that come under something that's known as CICRA. Uh, so these are the issues that get looked at as a developer's project, you know, snakes through the process. Um, this does not take the golf course. This, um, he, the developer mentioned that this would probably add over $1.2 million in, in tax revenues annually for the town. Um, and, you know, the thing is, is that if, if we look at, if we just look at the numbers here, the dollars, um, at some point, uh, the town of Stony Point is either just going to continuously need to fund the remediation of these buildings just to keep them standing, and, and ultimately that's going to be an economic burden to the town's people who will pay to have those um, expenses bonded, um, or they might think about the benefit of letting a developer shoulder uh, that expense and take down those buildings once and for all. I mean, the buildings, they, they, it's not like they can be resurrected. They, they cannot be utilized. And that's unfortunate, um, but that is the, the, the state of play there. And so it, it's kind of like, you know, if the, if the town officials want to keep kicking the can down the road and not take care of this because they're too afraid of the political consequences, well, so be it. But the truth is, is that the situation is there. This is not going to, let's put it this way, this cannot become a park because you need $10 million to, to take down these buildings. And Stony Point has a des desperate need for housing. Right. So, it, I, I mean, it, it seems like it's a strategic um, location uh, for that, but you know, people in every town, you know, become fearful when they see an escalation in population. Um, I, I think that this needs to be, um, you know, I, I think that there needs to be a lot of discussion and dialogue to, to get people comfortable with the plan uh, or to have the plan be massaged so that people can become comfortable with it. One last thing I would say is that this particular developer happens to have taken down another psychiatric um, hospital in um, in Ossining, and uh, that plan started out um, larger. It was scaled back. It, it took a lot of back and forth with the community, and now it is slated to become 95, 55 and older townhouse condo condos. So, um, you know, I think I think the bottom line is that this is a process. Right. And that you know, we we can't stop development in in, in this. I mean, we'd all there are times when we'd all like to just stop the clock and say this is all, this is it. But it's it's you know we see and from what I've talked about, we see that warehouses are going to be built here and they're going to be bigger than they used to be. And we see that housing is going to come here because there's a need. I mean, it's um, we have to you know think about how to do this in a way that's that's as smart as possible, and that um, brokers um, uh, you, you know that brokers compromises, um, and um, but but you know people people are, are very quick to to say things and believe things that might not necessarily be true. So bottom line is that because you know you're discussing public uh, reaction to this. Um, I, I think that there's a great responsibility on the part of the town leaders and the developer to to get out there and um, and 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 shop the project and 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 collect the uh, the input and so that it doesn't become a, a hostile situation. 
Perfect. Thank you so much, Tina Traster from the Rockland County Business Journal for joining us this morning. If you want to go and visit their website, rcbiz, B-I-Z, bizjournal.com, you're certainly welcome to do so to get more information on Rockland Business. And thank you so much. We will talk to you next week. We hope you have a great one, Tina. Have an awesome week. You as well. All righty.